Hey everyone, Matt Finney CMG Tano here, the internet's most inconsistent YouTuber, and you might be thinking to yourself right now, Hey, hey dumbass, didn't you fucking make this video already, you stupid bitch? Yeah, I did. But due to copyright problems and the fact that fair use is fucking dead, all of my reviewing every Pokemon blank videos have been blocked worldwide. So I've deleted them and I've decided I'm just gonna redo them without all any of the copyrighted visuals that'll bamboozle my ass. Originally I did this video in two parts, part one being all the promotional albums and part two being all the movie soundtracks. But today I decided, hey fuck it, we're just gonna do this in one big ass video. It's probably gonna be like an hour long. I'm gonna probably kill myself. Today I'm gonna be combining those two old videos together into one big video where we're gonna go through every album and review every individual song telling y'all what I think about them. And of course, we'll go and have a little miscellaneous section at the end where we'll talk about the opening themes, the ending themes, and all that shit. My opinions on some of these songs have changed since the first time around, so here's a more updated review of every English Pokemon song ever. All the songs and more that I talked about in this video can be found in the Pokemon Music Mix playlist on my channel where I've just compiled all of this shit into one fucking playlist. Keep in mind that I am, I'm no, I'm no fucking Anthony Fantana, right? I have like no re experience reviewing music, so forgive me if I sound like I'm repetitive or if I'm a fucking ignorant dumbass because I don't know anything about this shit. But with all that introductory stuff out of the way, smash that motherfucking like button. Let's get weird, let's get wild, and let's get right in to reviewing every Pokemon song ever. So the first Pokemon promotional album takes us back to 1999 with To Be A Master. Pokemania was in full effect at the time. Nobody could get enough of the games, nobody could get enough of the anime, nobody could get enough of this shit. The company responsible for dubbing the Pokemon anime, 4Kids, teamed up with Koch Records and recorded and released an entire album of Pokemon songs, some of which were used as inserts in the show, Others were used in the Pikachu's jukebox segments at the end of episodes, and there were some that were never used in the in the show at all in any capacity, and are just album exclusives. This album performed pretty well for a kids' album, topping the charts in many countries. In the United States, this album is certified gold, was the number one on the U.S. Billboard kids' albums, and peaked at 90 on the U.S. Billboard Top 200, which is fucking insane for what it is. To Be a Master is remembered fondly by Pokemon fans, so let's see if it's any good. This album starts off with the Pokemon theme, which right off the bat, that's a fucking banger right there. The Pokemon theme remains iconic to this day. Everyone and their mother knows the Pokemon theme, and even people who didn't grow up with the song know this song. Jason Page's vocals are great, the instrumental is upbeat and inspiring, the message of the song is the epitome of what Pokemon is made to represent. I can't think of a single thing wrong with this track. It's a banger. Next up is the titular track titled To Be A Master, much like the album. Being the titular track and the song that directly follows the Pokemon theme, this song has to be good to keep our attention, and I'd say that it does that pretty successfully. It's got this really funky vibe and flow to it, and you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for the pseudo-rap vocals, and honestly, you just kind of feel cool listening to it. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a master. I'm gonna beat your bitch ass. I'm gonna be the coolest master there ever was. The song slaps pretty hard. Next up is Viridian City, and it's just keeping this kind of upbeat vibe of the album so far. It's a fun song, but there's not a whole lot of substance to it. It's mostly about Pokemon trainers catching Pokemon in the forest and training them motherfuckers. I will say that this song is perfect to listen to when you're starting out at any Pokemon game, preferably Kanto because that makes the most sense. Like if I'm ever playing through one of the Kanto games and I am on the road to Viridian City, this song is right in my head because that's literally what I'm doing. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the road to Viridian City. Much like the previous song, it's fun, but it kind of lacks substance. It slaps. The fourth song on the album is titled, What Kind of Pokemon Are You? And yet again, we have another song without much meaning or substance to it, but still a really fun listen. The beat's nice and groovy, it has this very mysterious vibe to it, which works, I guess, because of the subject matter of the song. You know, it's asking about these mysterious creatures, so it's kind of gotta sound mysterious. The best part about this song, though, are the lyrics, where the puns and wordplay and rhymes are very simple, but you're still thinking to yourself, like, oh, that's pretty good. For instance, my favorite line in the song goes as follows. Good luck with Muck and his poison gas. Make one wrong move and it'll kick your grass. Which I think to me is pretty fucking funny. Ha <laughs> ha. He said ass, but not really though. Ha. There's another song in this album that slaps. But again, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just fun for the sake of being fun. Five songs into this album, and we finally have something with a little more proverbial meat on its bones with My Best Friends. This is the first song in the album that's not there just to like hype you up. It's not supposed to be fun for the sake of being fun. It actually has 
meaning and it represents something a little bit more. It's a song about friendship and that, in my opinion, is what Pokemon is all about. The lyrics are very generic, but they're generic like that on purpose so that the person listening to it can project what they think of when they think of friendship. When I hear this song, I personally think of Ash and Pikachu or Ash, Brock and Misty, but other people might think of other friendships that fit the bill, whether they be from Pokemon or from real life. However, that's kind of as far as my love for the song goes, since I really don't like the composition, but that's just a matter of taste, I suppose. All in all, I'd say that this one's a bop, but it's not like a fun bop, if you know what I mean. Like, it's a, it's a bop but it'll uh, like make you cry in the right mood, I guess. The next song is titled Everything Changes, and as you would assume, it's about change. The lyrics are generic enough to where this change is being described can apply to anything, but I think by adding the little interlude with Ash, Brock, and Misty in the middle of the song, talking about Pokemon evolution, I kind of undermine that. By all means, have a song about change that exists to teach kids about change and accepting change, but don't completely undermine that by making them think of Pokemon, because then that just kind of, the message is lost on them. Other than that though, the song is fine. The beat is very subtle, the vocals are good but not really my thing, and the lyrics are okay as well. I like this song, but it's kind of meh, I suppose. Like, it's 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 on the upper echelon of meh. Now we start getting into the real slow jams with our next song, The Time Has Come, aka Pikachu's Goodbye. You may remember this song from the episode with the same title, Pikachu's Goodbye, where a version of it played during a flashback montage of Ash and Pikachu while they're trying to make us fake us out and make us think that Pikachu was leaving the show and that's actually fucking asinine if you thought that was gonna happen. Anyways, you may remember the song having a male singer in the episode, but the album version is completely different from the episode version, sung in a completely different key and with a female vocalist this time around. Either way though, this song works so well outside of the context of Pokemon. It's another song about friendship, but this time in the context of a goodbye. You know, reminiscing about the good times and, and, the, and the days where the, you know, these friends first met wishing they could go back to that time, the simpler time. This song reminds us that no matter how strong a friendship is, that someday we have to say goodbye to the people we associate with and that it's not always gonna be easy. Alongside that, we have this melancholy instrumental and it really makes the song come together. The song is low key, made me shed a tear once or twice, so honestly, I think that's pretty damn good. Slaps. Next up, we have Pokemon Dance Mix, and I fucking hate it. From the title, you'd think that this would be a remix of the Pokemon theme or something, uh, but no, it's just some weird techno shit that I don't fucking like. It does it does make me want to dance. It makes me confused, and I'm just I'm just not a fan. It's the only song on this album that I think I genuinely dislike. I don't want to say it's trash because it's not bad. I guess objectively speaking, but if you ask me. Is, is doo doo. Moving on from that though, we've got Double Trouble, the Team Rocket song. This song takes the old Team Rocket motto and makes a song out of it. it it's great. It makes me want to commit cartoonishly harebrained crimes. It almost makes Team Rocket seem competent, and that's kind of what I like about it. Team Rocket have always been the villains that aren't evil. You know, they, they do bad stuff, but they have actual characters and personalities and hearts, so they're almost secondary protagonists in a way, and this song really captures that. The beat is villainous, the lyrics are peak Team Rocket. Giovanni even shows up at the end at some point to put these motherfuckers in their place. It's just a glorious song. Banger. Next up, we've got Together Forever, or as I call it, My Best Friends, but more interesting. It's a pretty upbeat song about friendship and being there for your friends through thick and thin. It's the same premise as My Best Friends from earlier in the album, but I think the song does a better job at conveying that same message. And ultimately, I think it comes down to Together Forever having a fr having friendlier composition, if that makes sense. My Best Friends is more of a ballad, and it goes pretty fucking hard, but Together Forever is simpler, and it feels more personal, which is why I think it works better. The lyrics are still very generic, but I still don't think that's a bad thing in this instance. Usually, I don't like it when songs, especially these Pokemon ones, have interludes in the middle of the song with the characters talking to each other, but I actually don't mind it here. Because it describes the dynamic of the original series gang perfectly, but shows that at the end of the day, that they're still gonna be friends. This is honestly one of my favorite songs in this album. It's a banger. Next on the album, we have Misty's song. The English dub of Pokemon is infamous for creating Pokeshipping, the idea that Ash and Misty have romantic feelings for each other, which was something that simply wasn't there in the original Japanese. For whatever reason, four kids decided to make it extremely obvious that Misty had a crush on Ash, and the idea became so popular that they went and made an entire song about it. It's a pretty good song, but it's also song based on a fucking lie, goddammit. So Misty's song, as you might have guessed, is a song from Misty's point of view where she confesses her love to Ash in song form. You know, there's some, there's some grade school level shit here, like, you look at me, I look away, and I tell myself today could be the day, but every time I lose my nerve, you know, this is shit that we've all experienced in like middle school. As an adult, this stuff is kind of cringy. You know, you don't you don't you don't do that as an adult. Being you know, love as an adult doesn't work like that. But as a kid, that's how you think love works, you know? And I think it adds to the cuteness of the song, honestly. The song perfectly describes this awkward middle school phase where, you know, everybody's afraid to confess their feelings. That's kind of why the song works. It's relatable to kids and to a 
adults who may have experienced similar things as kids. As for the song itself, the beat is very soothing, which works with this kind of song. The vocalist is fantastic. She has this very soft voice, so it sounds like she's whispering the song to herself. And she sounds remarkably close to Rachel Lillis as Misty, without reminding you that this is a Pokemon song. Speaking of which, this song has two like skits at the beginning and end, and they really only exist to add context to the song for people who have never seen Pokemon before. But if you're listening to a Pokemon album, you likely already know the context, so it becomes redundant. Uh, all in all, though, the song slaps, I'd say. After that, we got the Poke Rap, baby. You already know the motherfucking Poke Rap. There is zero meaning or substance to this song at all. It's just listing off the original 151 Pokemon in a rap, and it's absolute fire. The beat slaps, both the vocalists slap, the fact that they somehow fit 150 Pokemon in this song, made it rhyme, and didn't repeat anything is fucking dope. This song is fire. It's a banger. And last but not least, we have You Can Do It If You Really Try. This isn't a bad song, but it's a boring song to me. Like, we just got off of the poker app, you know, it's like, it's like the hypest song on the entire album. And then we gotta finish it with this. My issue with this song is that it doesn't really belong as the last song on the album, because it isn't really the note that I want to finish on. Other than that though, the song is an inspirational ballad about never giving up and chasing your dreams, which is certainly in line with what Pokemon is about. The song definitely belongs on this album because it perfectly describes Ash throughout the years, and I always think of the character when I hear this song, and it's, it's a great song, but it suffers from its placement in the track list and it kills the momentum of the poker app. It's aight. It's a night song. So that was To Be A Master, Pokemon's first album, and honestly, it was a pretty good start for Pokemon music. You've got some absolute bangers in here, like the Pokemon theme, To Be A Master, Viridian City, Together Forever, Double Trouble, and there's some slow jams in there that are really good, like Misty's song, Everything Changes, and The Time Has Come, and the poker app just... <clears throat> Icing on the cake, baby. I think the biggest problem with this album, though, is, is the track order. I feel like if it were arranged in a way where you have the upbeat songs at the beginning and end, and the middle is just all the slow jams and the ballads, and you finish the album off with the poker rap, it would have just it would have been a much stronger album, I think. Other than that, though, I don't really have an issue with this album. I'd say overall, as a whole, the album in general slaps. The idea, the idea of this video is to be like a Fantano parody, but at this point I'm just ripping them off. Following the success of 2B and Master, 4Kids, Pokemon, and Coast Records decided it was time for another original Pokemon album, this time to coincide with the anime's transition into Johto. So, in the year 2000, John Leffler, the guy in charge of music for Pokemon's English dub at the time, held auditions to form a Pokemon-themed pop group to record this new album. Six participants were found, forming the short-lived group titled Johto, same as the region. This group would go on to perform every song on the next Pokemon album, Totally Pokemon. However, unlike its predecessor, Totally Pokemon didn't get much universal praise. And due to that lack of popularity, the Johto group disbanded and never ended up going on tour like was originally planned. And it's kind of a shame that this group never really did anything else after this, since Totally Pokemon is, in my opinion, a better album than To Be A Master. Let's get into it. First on the album, we have the main opening theme for the third season of the Pokemon anime, simply titled Pokemon Johto. This song makes sure that you know that it's a whole new world we live in, it's a whole new way to see, that it's a whole new place with a brand new attitude, and still, they're telling us to catch them all. Did do 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 Now, but for real though, this song is super catchy. It's not my favorite Pokemon opening by far, but it certainly captures the vibe of Gen 2, where at the time it was absolutely insane that there would be a new region with new Pokemon. It was just insane for the time. That's normal to us now, but back then that was that was something crazy. This song really captures the excitement of a new adventure while still having those typical Pokemon themes of trying your best and chasing your dreams and all that. I diagnosed this song with slaps. Next up we have an absolute banger in Pikachu, I Choose You. This is a song about Pikachu but the lyrics are vague enough to where it can apply to any real friendship while still being explicitly about Pokemon. What I like most about this song, though, is, is the style of it. It's got this, like, Latin American dance music thing going on, and I, I fucking love it. Like, I don't know what the genre is, but it, it, it's fucking awesome. The trumpets slap hard, the vocals are fantastic, it gets a little slow during the verses, but then the hook is a straight bop. The song is an absolute banger, and it's not even the best song on the album. Third song on the album is All I Wanna Do, which was frequently featured in the Pokemon Karaokemon segments. And it's, it's I. It's very clearly a kid song, since it's all about having fun with your friends in the most PG way possible. However, there are also elements of being there for, through thick and thin with the, for your friends, but they're like, you know, overshadowed by this very simplistic idea of having fun. 
though. I, I can't really fault them for that, though, since it's, like, it's a kid's album. It does describe the anime pretty accurately, though, so I'll give it that. The intro of this song is pretty cool with this very quiet section, and then the main beat starts, and we start to hear some of the other vocalists, and, and they're pretty great. The rest of the song is pretty enjoyable, though it's a little generic for my liking. Uh, I, I like it, but it's not my favorite. It's I. Next song is The Game, and it goes pretty hard. It's all about training to be the best and trying to be a Pokemon master, and with that, it holds this typical Pokemon message of never giving up and all that. The verses do a pretty good job at depicting the struggles that a Pokemon trainer might actually face in the Pokemon world. And the hook goes pretty hard by turning the song into a very inspirational jam that makes me want to, you know, improve my competitive Pokemon skills or something like that, you know? It's all about the spirit of competition. It's not about winning or losing, and that's what the song really represents. And I'm totally down with that. I'd say this one's a slapper, a certified slapper. Next up is He Drives Me Crazy, or as I like to call it, Misty Song 2.0. Because that's basically what it is, and you honestly can't really judge it without comparing the two. It's got a, it's got a slow jam type of instrumental, the vocalists sound very similar, a very whispery tone, and it's a poke shipping song all about how Misty likes Ash, so you'd be remiss to not compare the two songs. To be fair though, I do think that this song does what Misty's song does, but better. I think it more accurately describes Ash and Misty's dynamic, where Ash is much more preoccupied with adventure and being a trainer to focus on Misty, and it's shown to us in this song in a very cute and innocent way. It could honestly have worked as like a late 90s early 2000s pop love song if it weren't for the Ash Ketchum name drop near the end of the song which which immediately reminds you that it's a Pokemon song but that single line I think is way better than the skits in the, at the beginning and end of Misty song it's a very soothing song about an innocent non-canon relationship so I can't exactly really be mad at it it slaps next up we have my absolute favorite Pokemon song not just off of this album but probably just in general you and me and Pokemon I think this song perfectly represents Pokemon even more so than the original theme does. It's all about, as you might have guessed, friendship, but more specifically about how a mutual love for Pokemon can bring people together and create lasting friendships and relationships, and that's exactly what Pokemon as a franchise is all about. Combine that with an upbeat instrumental and these super smooth duet vocals, every second of this song is just pure joy, and it's my favorite Pokemon song ever. I don't know if I could give it a ranking fitting of it, so let's call it a, a slapping banger. It both slaps and it's a banger. It's, it's, it's top Tier. It's like SS tier. If I was doing a tier list, this would be above S tier. Following that absolute masterpiece, we have Biggest Part of My Life. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this one. The song is fine, I guess. It's actually a great feel-good song with a nice beat and some really great vocals to it, but the title just really doesn't work for me. It's called Biggest Part of My Life, but what are they referring to? Is it, is it Pokemon, friendship, the journey? It's very vague and doesn't entirely make sense, and I guess that's done so it could be applicable to anything, so I guess it works in that regard, but it, it, it's not doing anything for me. It's I. Next song is titled, Do You Really Wanna Play? It starts off kind of weird with these odd, like, ambient city sounds or something like that. I don't really know what that is, but it sounds like, it reminds me of a city. And then the beat starts and it goes pretty fucking hard. This is kind of like an I'm the best and y'all can't step to me type song. Uh, it's very braggadocious and I could really admire that since most Pokemon songs are very upbeat and inspirational. This one's kind of like devious and arrogant in a way. And I, I like that. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's, something, it's something you just wouldn't expect from a Pokemon song. The beat weirdly fits the tone and the vocals do too with this kind of sed seductive, I guess for lack of a better term, vibe to it. I'd say it's a certified slap. From there we get into the song of Jigglypuff, which is all about our favorite pink delinquent, Jagglyport. It's got this nice acoustic guitar instrumental, and I know I've said this a lot about this album, but the vocals are very soothing, which works great in this case since it's about a Pokemon that sings people to sleep. Jigglypuff's song from the anime is sampled in this as well, which I think makes it a lot more immersive, if that makes any sense. I don't have much else to say about this one. It's pretty good. I'd definitely listen to it again, but there isn't much else to it. It's a, it's a bop, I'd say. Next we have my least favorite song on this album, Two Perfect Girls. Apparently there's a different version of this song that's a little bit better than the, uh, the Totally Pokemon version, but I, I, I couldn't hunt that down for the life of me, and honestly I just couldn't be fucked to do it. This is the only song on this album that's not performed by Johto. Instead, this is performed by Eric Stewart, the original English voice of Brock and also James, I think. It's a it's a Brock song, and if you couldn't already tell, it's all about his immense lust for Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny. Oh yeah, baby, it's it's polygamy time. Woo! I do like the instrumental, it's very jazzy, and Eric Stewart does a decent job at singing in character, but this song is just it's kind of cringe. Like I'm sure there are people that like it, but it's it's not for me. I'm a, I'm gonna put this one in the trash pile 
but don't let that stop you from enjoying it if you enjoy it. Moving on to the penultimate song on this album, we have Never Too Far From Home. This is the only real slow jam on the album, heavily utilizing acoustic guitars and a slower tempo than anything else on the album. This is a song from the perspective of a parent of a Pokemon trainer, you know, like Ash's mom, for example, who is constantly worrying about and welcoming of their kid. Apparently this song was used in the episode Houndoom Special Delivery in the little montage where a Houndoom is taking care of Togepi and trying to get it home to its trainer, which as we know is Misty, of course. So I guess you could also look at it through the lens of having somewhere to go and someone to turn to when things get bad for you. So I think it's a respectable song in that regard. It's got a nice message. It's all right, but I don't think it really fits in with the rest of the album, personally. And to close us out, we've got the Pokerap GS, the Johto Poke rap, baby. Much like a lot of songs in this album, it starts off very slow, but then it goes pretty fucking hard. You might remember this is the intro for Pokemon Chronicles, since this song has a lot more of the chorus than it actually does rapping Pokemon. The chorus actually does slap pretty hard, but it's really just them spelling out the word Pokemon, then naming like 16-ish Pokemon and repeating the process. But I'd be lying if it wasn't a total banger. It's got a completely different vibe from the original Poke rap, making it very unique and I think is a great closer for the album. So that was totally Pokemon. And like I said at the beginning of this section, I actually like it way more than To Be A Master. While To Be A Master was kind of all over the place in terms of, of vibes and genre, Totally Pokemon is much more consistent across the board in its content. You know, it's primarily pop music with a Pokemon coat of paint. But the only songs that don't belong being a slow jam and a joke song in an album filled with otherwise very catchy, insightful, feel-good songs. The best tracks are definitely You and Me and Pokemon, Pikachu, I Choose You, Do You Really Want to Play, and He Drives Me Crazy. Everything else is serviceable to some degree. And then we finish off with every member of Johto teaming up for one final song together in the Pokerap GS. It's a very consistent album, and I think it certainly deserves more recognition than it gets. If Charlie Brown has taught me anything, it's that Christmas is the most commercialized holiday ever. So it's literally of no surprise to me that Pokemon would capitalize on that shit. In 2001, Coach Records teamed up with the English voice cast of the anime to make a Pokemon Christmas album. Uh, nobody asked for this. Well, let's get right in to Pokemon Christmas Bash. The first track is Pokemon Christmas Bash, as same as the title of the album. And I won't lie, I think it slaps pretty hard. I was expecting this song to be exceptionally cringe, but this song is a straight up rap featuring Ash, Misty, Brock, Team Rocket, and fucking Dexter on the hook with the instrumental sampling Squirtle and Pikachu. It's actually fucking glorious. The contents of the song are okay. It's mostly just everyone saying what they want for Christmas. You know, you know, ty typical children's Christmas song kind of stuff. It's aight. Next is, I'm giving Santa a Pikachu for Christmas, which is more of a skit than a song. It's just Professor Oak telling Ash that he wants to give Santa a Pikachu for Christmas. And I don't think Professor Oak knows how Christmas works, since that's usually the, the other way around. This one's, a, this one's a meh from me. Next, we've got an absolute slapper with Winter is the Coolest Time of Year, and this one actually sounds like a Christmas song. It's a song from Misty's perspective all about how she loves the winter season. There's a little skit in the middle of the song that doesn't really feel that right to me, uh, but at this point, you guys know how I feel about skits in the middle of songs. Other than that, this one's an alright track. Fourth on the album is Nobody Don't Like Christmas, which is a song from Meowth's perspective about how Christmas overshadows most other holidays. It's an okay song, but what I find interesting about it are all the references to real life holidays that raise some very interesting questions. Uh, for example, Meowth mentions Easter in this song, which implies that Christianity exists in the Pokemon world. He also mentions the 4th of July and Memorial Day, which implies that America exists. He also mentions Easter bunnies, implying that real life bunnies exist in the Pokemon world. I know none of this, so none of this album is canon, but it's fun to think about, and that's where my enjoyment from this song comes from. Next up, we have my favorite song in the album, I Keep My Home in My Heart. Christ, these titles are so long, you'd think this is a fucking Fallout Boy album. This song is from the perspectives of Brock and Misty, who are lamenting about how much they miss their home and wish that they could be with their families on Christmas. The voice actors do a great job of singing in character, and the song is also quite accurate about, about Brock and Misty's home lives in, Pewter, in Cerulean City. There's some great line delivery, the beat is serviceable, and I think it definitely delivers on the emotion that it's trying to convey. It's a banger. After that, we have Team Rocket's cover of the Christmas song originally by Nat King Cole. As a cover, I think it captures the essence of the original song, but it has its own Pokemon twist, replacing some things with Pokemon references. It makes the song more accessible to kids, I guess, and I say that's pretty fair. Next up, we've got another banger, Under the Mistletoe. This song is great because it integrates the skits into the song in a way that doesn't feel forced. The song switches back and forth from Ash to Misty, where Misty sings about wanting to get caught under the mistletoe with Ash, 
while Ash is really dreading that very scenario. It's a polka shipping song, but much like the previous two polka shipping songs we discussed, it's kind of cute. It ends with Ash and Misty being stuck under the mistletoe, and Ash tries to get out of it. It, it plays almost like an actual episode would, and I, I love it for that. Like I said, absolute banger. Next we have Must Be Santa, which must be the worst track in this album, including the skits. It's literally just Ash, Brock, and Misty describing Santa Claus in song form, but it's super fucking annoying, because they just repeat shit over and over, and it makes me want to fucking blow my brains out. This one is probably there for the really young kids that this album was likely created for, but it, it's it's just not for me. It's gonna be it's gonna be a trash for me, dog. The penultimate track is a skit featuring the entire cast doing a reading of the night before Christmas, but with a Pokemon twist. It starts off with our main trio, but then Team Rocket comes in near the end and plays us out and finishes us off. This skit is actually pretty damn funny. I specifically like this line near the beginning. Did you get more? What? Oh yeah! And there's some other jokes and funny interactions in there that make this track pretty entertaining. And finally, we have Christmas Medley, where the cast sings a variety of classic Christmas songs with Pokemon twists. You know, Oh Christmas Tree becomes Oh Caterpie. You know, We Wish You a Merry Christmas becomes We Wish You a Merrill Christmas. You get the point. It's alright, I think the puns are clever enough and the singing is alright. A decent track. So that was Pokemon Christmas Bash, and honestly, this was better than I remember it being from the last time I reviewed this. I originally hated this album, save for a few tracks, but a lot more of them have actually grown on me a lot since then. I'd say the best tracks are definitely Under the Mistletoe, Winter is the Coolest Time of Year, Pokemon Christmas Bash, and I Keep My Home in My Heart. Some of the skits are pretty entertaining, but there are a few tracks that I could personally have done without. For a Christmas cash grab, it's, it's better than I initially gave it credit for. And our last original album from the original series era of Pokemon comes from the live musical Pokemon Live. This was an American musical based around the original series that toured around the states and a few other countries from 2000 to 2002. The musical itself is partially lost media since there was never an official release of it, and most of the songs from it were ripped straight from To Be A Master and Totally Pokemon. However, there are a few original songs that remain exclusive to this musical, so we'll be discussing those and skipping the stuff we already talked about. The first original track here is titled It Will All Be Mine, which is a song from Giovanni's perspective. It's a very braggadocious song with Giovanni proclaiming his great and the greatness of Team Rocket. It's a fantastic villain song, very similar to Double Trouble from To Be A Master. I've never actually seen the musical, so I don't know what purpose it serves in context, but out of context, it works just fine for me. It's got a great evil vibe to it, you know, like listening to it just makes me want to like take over the world or some shit, right? You know, I know, that, I know that's kind of cringe, but whatever. Jesse and James show up near the end of the song to recite part of the Team Rocket motto, and I think that's pretty cool, though their voices sound off, but you know, I guess that's to be expected since it's different actors, you know. Like I said, great villain song. It's a banger. The next original song is another Team Rocket song, this one titled The Best at Being the Worst. The song immediately starts off with some like Spanish guitar and castanets or some shit, with Jesse, James, and Meowth lamenting their failures. They are so bad at their jobs that it's actually a skill to be that inept. So they made a whole song about it. There's one line in the song where James says, quote, We are the Hindenburgs of crime, which implies that the Hindenburg disaster which killed 36 people happened in the Pokemon world. Again, I know, not canon, but it's fun to think about. There's not much else I really have to say about this one. I like the vibe, the vocals are great, and I think it really captures Team Rocket pretty accurately. It slaps. The next original song is titled I've Got a Secret, and there's a lot going on in this one. The first bit of context that I think is important here is that in this musical, Giovanni is Ash's father, which was a popular fan theory going around at the time the original series was originally airing in the States. The musical plays around with that dynamic, and that's half of what this song is about. Half of this song is from Delia's, or Ash's mom's, perspective, singing about how she can't tell Ash that Giovanni is his father or it'll completely break him. The other half of the song is our typical poker shipping stuff, with Misty proclaiming her love for Ash, you know, but, but keeping it a secret out of fear that he'd reject her. The end of the song also has Ash singing to himself about moving on through hard times, because I believe at this point in the musical, Pikachu has been captured and Ash has to try to find him. Like I said, there's a lot going on here, but I think it all works really well. Let me just say, the vocals for this song are fucking fantastic. There's so much emotion just behind every line. It's it's great. The instrumental also feels very secretive, which matches the title and, li and lyrical contents of the song. Overall, I think it's my favorite original song from Pokemon Live, though It Will All Be Mine is, is super close. That they're basically tied. And the last song from this musical is You Just Can't Win, which is performed right before Ash and Giovanni have their final showdown. This one sounds like it could be straight off of Totally Pokemon because it has that early 2000s pop vibe, but you know, maybe that's just me. It's pretty short and the singing is pretty good, but there isn't a whole lot to it. There is one line that I find pretty unintentionally hilarious, which is when Ash says, time to pay for your sins, which is pretty funny because I'm imagining Ash's anime voice saying that, and it, it, it's so out of place and I fucking love it. So that's all for the original tracks from Pokemon Live the musical, and I gotta say, they're all pretty 
solid. They all sound similar to songs that were on To Be A Master and Totally Pokemon, which makes me think that some of them might have just been cut from those albums and repurposed in the musical, but that's just conjecture, I guess. I don't really have much else to say. I think these are all really solid tracks. If you haven't listened to them, I would definitely recommend them. I don't know if I'd recommend the musical itself, though. That's, that's, that's kind of whack. Two thousand and six was the tenth anniversary of Pokemon, so to celebrate, the Pokemon Company did a lot of obvious promotion, and one thing that they did to celebrate this was releasing an album related to the anime. Pokemon X, not to be confused with the game Pokemon X, was more or less a greatest hits album featuring songs from To Be a Master, Totally Pokemon, and all nine English openings that existed at the time, as well as a few insert songs that were put into the anime. Obviously, we're going to be skipping the stuff that we already covered, since a lot of it is duplicates from previous albums. It's also worth mentioning that the anime openings are all TV size on this album and not the full version, so to be generous, I'll be taking the full versions into account if they exist. So let's get right into it. Let's start with the third song on the album and the second English anime opening, Pokemon World. I'm probably gonna repeat myself a lot when it comes to the openings, but this song slaps so hard. I love hip hop, so this song's boom bap type beat is super appealing to me, and it's just, it's, it's just hype incarnate. This song just gets me excited, you know, it gets me hyped. The, you know, the call and response, the too cool for school vibe, the inspirational lyrics, it's fantastic. It's a banger. Moving on from the third track to the ninth track, we have the fourth English opening, Born to be a Winner. To me, this song is just a remix of the Pokemon theme. It uses the same lyrics for the verses, you know, I, you know, I wanna be the very best like no one ever was. But it changes the chorus and pre-chorus, so that's something different at least. The original lyrics that they did add are good enough. They, you know, they have that early Pokemon inspirational vibe, so I guess I'll, I'll forgive that. I think the reason they did this was to mirror the Japanese openings, where the fourth OP was a remix of the first OP, but it, it might just be a coincidence as well. It has this te techno hip-hop beat. I don't know if that's, if techno is the right word to use. I don't think techno is really a fucking popular genre, but, but I think you know what I mean. But and, and to be fair, I kind of like it. It makes me it makes it feel different from all the other Pokemon themed covers out there, so I think it definitely deserves credit for that. Not much else to say, this one's a banger. Next we have the fifth opening, Believe in Me, and it's a personal favorite of mine. It goes in a completely different direction from the last opening, with this one heavily featuring electric guitars and it goes pretty fucking hard. The lyrics are inspirational as always, all about striving to be the best and believing in yourself. If you listen to the full version, it's got a really long guitar solo, but it slaps pretty hard. All in all, this one's a banger. Next we have opening six titled I Wanna Be A Hero. This one doesn't have a full version and I think it could really benefit from one. The lyrics to this song are pretty on the nose but to me they kind of miss the point of Pokemon. You know there's lines like a kid from Pallet Town with a brand new world to see and take a step and I'm on my way gonna start all over again which are obviously referencing Ash who is who's starting all over again in a new region. At the same time this song heavily features lines about wanting to be a hero and you know as the title implies obviously but that's not really what Pokemon is about, and especially not the anime. At least to me, Pokemon has always been about friendship and trying your best to be the best, not about heroism. So I think it kind of missed the mark in that regard. Other than that though, I really like the instrumental. It feels like the previous two openings combined. You know, I really I like that, I really like that pew sound, you know, there's your pew. I, I, don't, I don't know why, I just, like, I just like that sound. The sound is appealing to me. Again, if this song had a full version, it would have a lot more room to breathe with its lyrical contents. Uh, otherwise, it slaps. Next, we have the seventh opening, This Dream. And I fucking love this opening because unlike the previous one, this song captures what Pokemon is about. As the title suggests, it's all about following your dreams and never letting them die, which is something Pokemon is pretty big on. In terms of composition, it has huge rock influences with its electric guitars. It doesn't go as hard as Believe in Me from earlier, but it's got great potential for a solo, which leads me into the next point. This opening really needs a full version. There's a fan-made one that sounds really close to the original, but it doesn't quite capture the vibe. This one also works really well when watching the, the video for the opening, specifically the one shot of Metacham doing a little dance with the guitar riff. Uh, no real negatives for me on this one, it's a banger. Next we have my absolute favorite English Pokemon opening, Opening 8 titled Unbeatable. It's almost the perfect Pokemon song. It's about friendship and striving to be the best, much like the original Pokemon theme. This one has a more braggadocious arrogance to it that I kind of like. Previous openings have been much more like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna battle and have a great time. Well, this one's more like, I'm going to beat you repeatedly until you fucking lose. And I love it. We need more unapologetic Pokemon songs like that. This one has a full version used for movie eight and it improves the song tenfold. There's a really long guitar solo in the middle before getting into the second verse, which is a lot more introspective and inspirational than the first verse, but still has that vibe of trying to be the best. This one's a banger, and it's definitely one of the best Pokemon songs ever. And last for the openings on this album, we have the ninth intro song, simply titled Battle Frontier. Personally, I'm not a fan. I like the instrumental, you know, it's got those rock vibes we've been hearing from the previous openings, 
with a more upbeat tone, but I feel like it's heavily lacking in the lyrical department. The lyrics are incredibly basic and don't go any deeper than surface level. Previous openings had some surprisingly intricate metaphors, but this one doesn't really have much of that. I'd say this one definitely needs a full version, but it, it has a full version, and though it makes it a little better, I, I'm still not feeling it. However, it is very catchy, so I will give it points for that. All in all, it's not a bad song, but it's certainly not a favorite. Moving on to some of the original songs for Pokemon X, we have the Hoenn Poker app, which is completely different from both the Kanto and Johto Poker apps. There are actually two versions of this song, the original which is slower and kind of boring, but there's also a remix which is a lot faster and upbeat. I will be focusing on the remix because I think it's better and more unique, but they are both ultimately the same song. First of all, I have no clue what this song is sampling, but it, like it sounds like a Japanese flute or something, but it, it's super unique and I've never heard anything quite like it. This song differentiates itself from other poker apps in the sense that it goes mostly in Pokedex order, but it makes up for that fact by adding extra lyrics to help it flow and rhyme better. A, a few Pokemon are left out in Zigzagoon and Relicanth, however, Celebi and Mew are also included, which weren't in their respective regions poker apps, so, you know, they, they kind of compensated for that, I guess. This poker app also has a really weird habit of terribly mispronouncing Pokemon names. Like, instead of Groudon and Kyogre, the proper way to pronounce them, they pronounce it Groudon and Kyogre. And it's kind of funny just because of how dumb it sounds, but they definitely lose points for accuracy. Point is, it's a lot more lyrically interesting than previous poker apps that just list off Pokemon. I want to say that the beat makes this my favorite poker app, but it's such a hard decision for me, honestly. Either way, this is the poker app that time forgot, and I honestly think it slaps pretty hard. Next, we get into the insert songs, starting with Best Friends. This song was used in the episode where James leaves Chimeco, and it's honestly a real tearjerker, you know, even outside of that context. This song just exudes raw emotion, like it feels like the type of song like a high school kid would write for a like a prom proposal or some shit and I don't mean that in a bad way. The song feels so genuine, like an actual ballad dedicated to your best friend. It's about being there for your best friends through the good, the bad, and the ugly, and coming out as a better person on the other side. But it's in the context of a goodbye, which gives it a more somber tone. This song is truly an emotional experience, and I'd highly recommend it. I would say it's a banger, but it's it's pretty emotional. You might actually cry listening to it. Next song is Stay Together, featured in the episode where Maze Eevee hashes from the egg. This song deals with the same subject matter as the last song, with friendship and and being there for your friends as major themes. However, this song is a lot more hopeful that things will get better if you stick together. Instrumentally, the song gives me like Avril Lavigne vibes. Not really sure why, that's just kind of the first thought I had. I think it works best as an insert song. You know, I don't think it would work well as like an intro or an outro theme. And the episode that it uses in, it's used pretty well. All in all, it's a pretty great song that I think seems to be forgotten by Pokemon fans. It slaps. And the last for Pokemon X, or is, is it Pokemon 10? I'm not actually sure what the, uh, whatever. We have the theme to the Mastermind of Mirage Pokemon special titled Go Pokemon Go. Not to be confused with the mobile game. Truly a song ahead of its time. This song is another one of those that truly captures what Pokemon is all about, the anime specifically. It's about traveling around the world and vibing with your friends with a mutual love for Pokemon. It's about how Pokemon brings people together and I, I really admire that. The song is also super fucking catchy because of its jazz-like instrumental, making it super like danceable. You know, I'm not, I'm not a dancing kind of guy, but it makes me want to dance, you know what I'm saying? The singers are also really great here. You know, they put a lot of effort into their performance and they spit some stuff that I certainly can't do, but you know, I'm, I can't sing, I'm not a singer, so yeah. Whatever. I know a lot of people think the rap part at the end is kind of cringe, but I actually really enjoy it. Yo, Pokemon Masters, your heart beats faster, trade it for the stop, cause you know you can't stop. You traded kicks now, Pokemon power, wow, the power of a master up for you will pass. I'm not doing the whole thing. I'm fucking not. I told myself in the script that I was gonna do the whole thing, I'm not doing it. I believe that this song was used as the ending credit song for the ninth season of the anime as well. And I hate that they use seasons, but certain parts of the song certainly work very well as an ending theme. This is a great song, definitely up there with some of the more forgotten Pokemon songs. It's a banger, dude. So that was Pokemon X, or, or Pokemon 10, however you want to say it, I don't know. But regardless of how you say it, it's more or less a greatest hits album for Pokemon. It has all the intros up until that point, but they only have the TV size version. And I think if they had the full versions, it'd be a lot better. It really only exists as a way to compile all of the opening themes, but I think they definitely could have included a lot more insert songs. Only two of them were included, but there were a lot more of them in Advanced Generation, and of course, we'll talk about them later, but I feel like they should have been included on this album specifically. However, almost every song on this album is pretty good, they're just short. Now, let's get into some of the movie soundtracks. The first of those, as you would expect, is the soundtrack to Pokemon the first movie. With Pokemon being as big as it was back in the day, a lot of musical artists, both established and coming up at the time, wanted a piece of that Pokemon clout, so this soundtrack features a lot of different contemporary artists. A lot of the songs on this soundtrack were never used in the movie or the Pikachu short associated with it, but their inclusion indicates that they must have some relation to Pokemon. For this soundtrack and the next one, 
I will be judging these songs based on how well they fit in with the themes of that movie or of Pokemon in general. For the songs that were used in the movie, I will be acknowledging the context in which they were used and judging them based on that. Let's get into it. First up, we have the movie version of the Pokemon theme performed by Billy Crawford. What else can I really say here? It's the Pokemon theme, but with a pop twist to it. Maybe it's the, maybe it's just the opening battle from the movie being so iconic that it's influencing me here, but it, it's the kind of song that you could totally edit like a battle AMV to, but, to, but you could also like dance to if you wanted to, right? It's in this really weird middle ground between like epic friendship ballad and pop jam. Crawford's performance is great and he really differentiates himself from Jason Page on the original while still capturing that same lighthearted atmosphere. It's a banger. Next is Don't Say You Love Me by M2M, one of the leading singles from this soundtrack with the music video being used to promote the movie and was used as one of the end credit songs in the movie as well. Honestly, I think it's a cute song. It's got those, you know, high school romance vibes, if that makes sense. You know, it's from the perspective of a girl where the guy is coming on way too strong. She's like, hey, she's like, hey, slow down there, buddy. It's the, it's the kind of shit kids eat up. It doesn't really have much to do with Pokemon, so I can only assume that it was included as Poke shipping bait. So I suppose it gets a pass there. I like the use of acoustic guitars. It gives the song a very summertime vibe, you know, tying back into the idea of that high school age summertime love kind of thing. Like I said, it's, it's a cute song and it definitely slaps pretty hard. Next on the soundtrack is titled It Was You, performed by Ashley Ballard and So Plush. I don't believe that this song was used in the movie, but I think it definitely could have worked as an end credit song because it has that positive, hopeful vibe that you would definitely need at the end of the movie. Vocals are great as well, she goes pretty hard near the end. Much like the rest of this soundtrack, it's very much late 90s pop, so it fits right in there. Lyrically, this song could be interpreted multiple ways, which is why I think it was included. It's a song about friendship, which is definitely Pokemon's thing, but it could also apply to romantic attraction, which definitely would have dated the Poke Shippers. and I think it worked because you could just apply this song to the characters. You know, Ash and Pikachu, Ash, Brock, and Misty, Ash and Misty, Trainer and Pokemon. You know, you get, you get the idea. It's about being there for your friends and making each other better people. Very positive message that fits in with Pokemon, so I see why it was included. Not my favorite from the soundtrack, but it's still quite good. I would say that it slaps. Next is one of my personal favorites, We're a Miracle, performed by Christina Aguilera, which was used as the main ending song for the movie, and I can definitely see why. The entire first verse basically references the movie, with lines such as, seems the storm has passed, relating to Mewtwo's storm clearing at the end of the movie, and that all the tears in heaven would bring me back to you, drawing a clear parallel to the Pokemon tears that bring Ash back to life makes perfect sense to me why it was included. I probably don't need to tell you this, but the vocals are really great considering Christina Aguilera is one of the most well-respected modern singers. I absolutely fucking love the instrumental. It's so soothing and it feels like, you know, the calm after the storm. This is typically not my kind of music, but it's a fucking banger, probably my favorite from this soundtrack. Next is Soda Pop by Britney Spears, which wasn't used in the movie, but was probably included to go with the Pikachu's Vacation short that plays before the movie, despite not being used in either. It's very tropical in its instrumentation and the background vocals, and it oozes vacation, so it definitely fits in with the vacation theme, even though it wasn't actually used in the short. Lyrically, it doesn't have too much going on, so I really don't have much else to say about it. It's a fun song, but it's not a favorite of mine. It's I. Next is Somewhere Someday by NSYNC, yet another song that wasn't used in the movie in any capacity. I could totally see this one working in the end credits, but it, it just wasn't used. It's it's NSYNC, so you kind of know what you're getting into in terms of production and talent, uh, but this song has no real reason to be on this soundtrack. It's more or less a generic love song. It, it has nothing to do with friendship or Pokemon. I guess a case could be made for Pokeship or Pandering, or that its themes of bringing someone back from the brink could apply to Mewtwo. Both of those seem like stretches to me though. It's not a bad song, in fact, I think it slaps, it just doesn't really belong here. Next up is Get Happy by Bewitched, and much like the previous song, it, it uh, doesn't really belong. It lyrically has nothing to do with Pokemon. The first line is literally, don't be a brontosaurus, like, like what the fuck does that even mean? It wasn't used in the movie at all, and I can see why, because it has no reason to be here. I will say that it's a pretty good feel-good song, and the production is okay, but it's not doing anything for me. Next is Hey You, Free Up Your Mind, performed by Emma Bunton, which surprisingly to me was used as one of the end credits songs, and I'm really not sure why. It's another feel-good song, this time about letting music free your mind so you can just be out there vibing. It's not bad, but it just doesn't belong in this soundtrack, since music has nothing to do with Pokemon, and it seems like it's just a feel-good track for the sake of having one in the credits. Again, not a bad song per se, but it just doesn't belong, and I'm not a fan. Next is Fly With Me by 98 Degrees, which is yet another feel-good love song that wasn't used in the movie and has no relevance to Pokemon. I am starting to sense a pattern here, but the song is fine. It's just not for me, and it doesn't belong here. The 10th track in the soundtrack is Lullaby by Manda, and though it wasn't used in the movie, we finally have a song that's actually related 
to Pokemon. Despite not showing up in the movie, this song is about Jigglypuff, and much like the one song on Totally Pokemon. However, if you remove the beginning and end bits of the song with Jigglypuff's, you know, like, cry or his little song, you know, like, Jigglypuff, you'd have a more generic pop tune. Regardless, the connection is there, so it gets a pass in that regard. Other than that, the song has no relation to Pokemon lyrically. If anything, I'm surprised they put this on a kid's album because it's very manipulative and, like, seductive. You know, it kind of reminds me of, like, TLC's No Scrubs, but, like, I don't know if that's a good comparison, but you guys know what I mean. It's an alright song, it's pretty soothing, but the lyrics are a little weird. I wouldn't say that it slaps, but it definitely has its place here. Next track is Vacation by Vitamin C, which was used in the Pikachu's Vacation short, and that's pretty much the only reason that it's here. It definitely worked in the short with all the gang's Pokemon getting ready to have a fun vacation day. You know, it's a fun song, but there's not much, you know, substance to it. If you're in the right mood for it, it slaps. Next track is Making My Way Any Way That I Can by Billy. Just just Billy. I, William Eyelash? This one wasn't used in the movie at all, but I think it fits on the soundtrack. It's about pushing through life to make your way through it and follow your dreams however you can, which I think is definitely in line with Pokemon, Ash specifically. Yeah, in terms of production, it sounds like the past five songs, and it, you know, it's this late 90s pop slash R&B vibe, and it's, and it's getting a little old. Much like the last few tracks, it's a decent song just not for me. Next is Catch Me If You Can by Angela Villa, which was used in the Pikachu short where Squirtle races Meryl. This is one of the few songs in the soundtrack that was explicitly made for Pokemon, and you can tell because they mention it a lot in the background vocals. It's a, it's a fun song, very upbeat, very playful. The singing is great, it's super catchy. It'll get stuck in your head pretty damn quick. I'd say that it slaps. Next we have Have Some Fun With The Funk by A.A. Ron Carter. Yes, the same kid who sang the theme song to the Jimmy Neutron movie. Jimmy, Jimmy, to the rescue through the big blue sky. It starts off with some beatboxing before getting into a pretty decent instrumental that's very different from anything else on this soundtrack. This one heavily featuring like electric guitars, but then it gets more generic during the verses. It's a guilty pleasure, but it, it has no reason to be on this soundtrack because it has nothing to do with Pokemon. It's just a kid-friendly party song, and that's literally it. I don't blame them because it's a soundtrack meant for kids, uh, but it's gonna be a no for me, dog. The penultimate song is If Only Tears Could Bring You Back by Midnight Suns, which was used as one of the end credit songs for the movie. And I'd say that it's somewhat fitting. The title alone kind of gives it away, but the song is about tears bringing people back which of course happens literally in the climax of the movie. Honestly, I think it's a great song. It's, it's very heartfelt in its lyrics. It differentiates itself from the past few songs by being a slow jam, the first proper slow jam I think that we've had on this album. It has a very soothing instrumental and it could probably bring a man to tears in the right mood. It's a banger, definitely one of the best in the soundtrack and definitely deserves to be in the end credits. And last but not least, we have Brother My Brother by the Blessed Union of Souls, which was used as an insert song in the movie in the scene where the Pokemon fight their clones. It's completely different from anything else in this soundtrack, but that changed is certainly welcome and it definitely belongs here. As counterproductive as the theme of the movie was, this song fits in with that theme. You know, it's all about coming together and being friends instead of needlessly fighting, which is weirdly relevant even today if you've been look keeping up with recent events. The song is almost entirely acoustic and the vocals give it this gospel choir-like vibe where they're, you know, they're, they're preaching whatever, they're preaching. It's a great emotional song and it definitely belongs and I'd say it's a banger even though it's a little bit sad, you know, it's a little bit more of an emotional one. So that was the soundtrack to Pokemon the first movie and honestly it could have been half as long. It has a really strong start with the Pokemon theme, We're a Miracle, Don't Say You Love Me, and a really strong ending with the final two songs, but most of the middle songs just kind of all feel the same to me. There are a ton of feel-good pop songs that have zero relation to anything in the movie, and it gets old after like the second or third one. I know a lot of these songs were included here for marketing purposes, but that doesn't excuse the fact that a lot of them just don't fit at all. There were also a few songs that fit perfectly with the movie, but were never used, and songs that were used that were not relevant at all. Most of the songs are pretty good, and I like a decent amount of them, but half the track list just doesn't belong here. I know I'm gonna get hate for shitting on some people's favorite nostalgic childhood soundtracks, but it's not a great soundtrack. It's got some bangers on there, certainly, but a lot of them just don't work on a Pokemon album. It's something for Riley, it's Jimmy Neutron time. Now let's get into the soundtrack for Pokemon the Movie 2000. Same rules apply as the last one, you guys know how this works. First track is The Power of One performed by Donna Summer, which was used as the main end credits song for the movie. This shit slaps. The production and singing are fantastic, with the instrumental sampling Lugia's theme and Donna Summer knocking it out of the fucking park. It fits in perfectly with the theme of the movie, being that one person has the power to make a difference, but nobody can do that alone. It has cultural relevance years later, with 2012 presidential candidate Herman Cain quoting it in one of his speeches, and the, the subject matter happens to be very relevant today with recent events. It is a fucking fantastic song. 
This soundtrack is pulling out all the stops right off the bat. This song is a banger, and I am fucking here for it. Next song is called Dreams by Alicia, with a, with a Y, there's a Y in there. And, and it's pretty good. The singer has some pretty impressive range, and the instrumental gives this whimsical feeling. Though the song wasn't used in the movie at all, the lyrics fit in with Pokemon as a whole, if you ask me. You know, it's all about following your dreams and believing yourself. You know, that's kind of Pokemon's thing, as we've kind of established throughout this video. All in all, I'd say that this one slaps pretty hard. Next is They Don't Understand by Dream Street. This song was not used in the movie, but they artificially added Pokemon references to the song to make it related. The original song actually has nothing to do with Pokemon, but they added references to it in the chorus and the second verse to make it like a completely different song, which is more than I can say for the previous soundtrack. At, you know, at least here they attempted to be a Pokemon soundtrack throughout. This song really does fit though, because it's all about how parents will never really understand their kids and their love for Pokemon. You know, it's it's gatekeeping, but it's, it's for the kids, so, so it gets a pass. Youth culture, yeah! As an adult listening to this, it's kind of cringe, but it's a guilty pleasure for me. It's slaps. Next song is Wonderland by Angela Villa, who you may remember from the previous soundtrack. She did the song, one of the songs for the Pikachu short. According to Bulbapedia, this song was inspired by the Pikachu short that plays before the movie, but even without knowing that, I could definitely see how it would fit in here. It's about going through, you know, the trials and tribulations of life and coming out in a better place, which I think could totally apply to both the Pikachu short and the movie in general, I'd say. I'm not huge on the beat for this one, but the singing is pretty good, so... All in all, I'd say this one slaps. Next is With All Your Heart by Plus One, who I can only assume they chose specifically because the number one seems to be a big motif for this soundtrack. It's got that early 2000s guitar pop thing going on, if that makes sense. In case you haven't guessed by now, I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. Plus One is a boy band, so you get the typical early 2000s boy band thing going on, which isn't bad, you know, they're pretty talented, clearly. The song definitely fits in with the theme of the movie, even though it wasn't used as it has that same Pokemon message of trying your hardest to make your dreams come true. You know, they even have a, you know, a gotta catch them all in there, which is which is pretty cool to me. I wouldn't call it a favorite, but I, I think it's certainly a pretty good song. Next song is The Extra Mile, performed by Laura Pausini, which, much like the rest of this soundtrack, wasn't used in the movie, but still relates to the movie. It's that same message as the past few songs, where it's like, yeah, I'll go through the tough times to get to my friends, we're gonna save the world and shit. I actually really do like this song though. The production and singing are really great. It's something about the chorus to me. I, I just don't know what it is, but it's just really fucking intoxicating. Personally, I would say that this one's a banger. Seventh song on this soundtrack is Flying Without Wings by Westlife, which was used as one of the end credits songs in the movie. I fucking love this song. The instrumental and the vocals start off very quiet in the beginning of the song, but as the song goes on, it adds more percussion and backing instruments, and the singers start, you know, inflecting more to where it becomes this fucking absolute ballad by the end of it. It is a glorious experience. The song is all about the little things in life that make you truly happy, and I think that's why it was included on this soundtrack. You know, there's lines like, You'll find it in the deepest friendship, the kind you cherish all your life. Another line being, and you're the place my life begins and you'll be where it ends, makes me in immediately think of the bond between Ash and Pikachu. The YouTube channel Poke Press also made a pretty good case for the song being from Ash's mom's perspective and relates to that parental bond. A song this good has no right being on a Pokemon soundtrack because it's such a fucking banger. I absolutely love it. Next we have another banger, the movie version of Pokemon World, performed by Youngstown and Nobody's Angel. Of course, this song was used in the opening credits of the movie, and I think I like this version better than the original. This version is more of a dance mix, but it does so by accentuating that hip-hop vibe that the original had and adding elements of R&B during the verses. Much like the original, it's a total banger. Next up is Blah 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 by Devotion to Music, which wasn't used in the movie, but it is without a doubt about Pokemon. It has a similar message to They Don't Understand from earlier, where it's from a kid's perspective singing about how their parents don't understand this whole this whole Pokemon thing, and they just want to play Pokemon all day. Yeah! Youth culture! Whoa! Again, from an adult's perspective, it's kind of cringe, but I get why it's there. The vocals are fine, but I really like the instrumental on this one, with its use of brass and percussion to give this celebratory kind of vibe. It slaps, but I think the lyrics are kind of cringe. Tenth track is Pokemon by Weird Al Yankovic, which was used in the end credits of the movie. It's essentially a polka rap, but it's polka music. And I never thought I'd say this about a fucking polka song, but it's actually pretty good? It's very upbeat, but I think it's Weird Al's charm that really sells it. I'm not really a Weird Al fan at all, but apparently he has this thing where he inserts the number 27 into a lot of his songs. And this is here as well, where he mentions there's 127 more Pokemon to name, so I thought that was kind of interesting even though that's not actually the correct number, but <laughs> whatever. There's not much substance to this one, but it's definitely an entertaining listen. It slaps. Next is The Chosen One, performed by the B-52s, which takes the prophecy from the movie, you know, you know, disturb not the harmony of fire, ice, or lightning, and, and all that, and they turn it into a song. It, it, it doesn't work at all. It just sounds awkward when they try to put it over a beat because I don't think it was ever really meant to be. You know, I'm, I'm not even crazy about the instrumental either. It sounds like the kind of song you'd hear at like a seaside bar with a bunch of drunks trying to play music. 
I'm, I'm just not a fan of this one. Following that one is One Heart by O-Town. It essentially has the same message as The Power of One and some other songs from earlier, where it's about believing in yourself and all that shit. The song sounds a little overproduced, if you ask me. It feels like there's too much going on in the chorus specifically, though I do like the way that they deliver that Power of One line at the end of the, at the chorus. Not a bad song, and I think it definitely fits here, but it's just another that's not for me. The penultimate track is One by Denise Lara, which is yet another song preaching the same messages as the majority of this soundtrack. It's not bad for that, but to me it just feels like a more boring version of The Power of One. On its own, it's a nice little inspirational jam. I could, I could totally jive with it, but it feels pretty repetitive with everything else going on in the soundtrack being so similar. It, it, it's, it's okay. I'll, I'll give it an okay. And lastly, since we're not doing the two, last two instrumental tracks, because fuck those, we have Come Into the Rescue by O-Town, a song used in the Pikachu short associated with this movie. The short is titled Pikachu's Rescue Adventure, so it makes sense that they'd have a song about rescuing people as the theme song for it. I think it's a fun song, you know, it's very positive vibes, very wholesome, and I, I haven't seen the short in a while, but from what I recall, it fits pretty well with the scene that it's in. I think it slaps. And that was the soundtrack for Pokemon the Movie 2000. Overall, I think it did a much better job than the first soundtrack at using songs that were either related to the movie or explicitly about Pokemon. It's a much more consistent soundtrack. One thing I really liked about this soundtrack was that it had a theme to it, with many of the songs relating to the subtitle of the movie, The Power of One. Of course, there's the song, The Power of One, there's Plus One, there's The Chosen One, One to Heart, One, you get the point. Much like the first movie soundtrack, there's a chunk of this one that's kind of boring. And in this instance, it's near the end of the track. List. The first 10 songs are all pretty good, with the power of one, dreams, the extra mile, flying without wings, all being highlights, but once we get to the chosen one, the songs start feeling a little bit forced. The final track kind of comes to the rescue, pun completely intended, to send us out on a good note, but other than that, the soundtrack didn't really finish off too strong. Overall though, I'd say that it's a great soundtrack for Pokemon fans, a lot of great songs, a lot of power ballads, a lot of stuff about friendship, it, it, it's great, go listen to it. I'm not sure whether to call this one a soundtrack or an album or what, because it's kind of both. The Pokemon Movie Music Collection was released in 2017 and compiles all the music from the X and Y movies and the I Choose You movie, with full versions of the opening themes, the end credits songs, and some stuff from the Pikachu shorts. I personally feel as though X and Y was where we started to get some of the weaker opening songs, Well, let's see how this goes. For whatever reason, this album is organized in backwards order, in reverse chronological order, so it's gonna be formatted a little bit weird, so just, just bear with me, I'm just gonna go in the track order. Uh, so let's get into it. First track is the Pokemon theme from the I Choose You movie, which is, weirdly enough, the second time that Ben Dixon and the Sad Truth have done a cover of the Pokemon theme. The first time was for the first X and Y opening, so I thought it was kind of weird that they got the same people to do it again, not that many years later, but but whatever. This also wasn't the last time that they covered the Pokemon theme, because they also did it again for the, the remake of the Mewtwo movie, so... How many times are these guys gonna do the Pokemon theme? This version is a lot closer to the original than the X and Y version was, and I think that was kind of the point. Where they needed the Pokemon theme to be closer to the original for nostalgia purposes, for, you know, for the nostalgia bait movie. Personally, I think that's just kind of counterproductive. They could have just used the original and it wouldn't have changed anything. However, I think this version is actually worse than the original because it ends on a complete low note. You know how after the second chorus on the original, they get into this like epic guitar solo before finishing the song on a really high note? Well, this version just kind of ends and fades out before that solo, which is kind of fucking stupid to me. Overall, it's not a bad cover and it does a good job at capturing the essence of the original, but if it's just gonna serve the same purpose as the original, then why bother making it? Why not just use the original? It's okay, but... I'd prefer the original. Next is I Choose You, the end credits song for Movie 20. For all of you X and Y stands and more shippers out there, this one is performed by Serena's English voice actress Haven Paschal, and she's actually pretty good. I'm surprised she didn't sing in the series at all, because considering there were actually musical segments of, of that involving that character, but yeah, whatever, I guess. Anyways, this song is, is an absolute fucking tearjerker. Considering it was made for Movie 20, it's pretty clear that this song is referencing Ash and Pikachu's friendship in the lyrics. One line near the end specifically made me think of that, that line being, as the planet spins around, we're eternally bound, which is so fucking wholesome to me. It's kind of that typical Pokemon song about going on adventures and cherishing memories with your friends, and it works really well. The instrumentation is also really good, where most of it is this quiet little piano jingle, but near the end of the song, it gets very orchestral, and it becomes this friendship ballad. It's a great emotional song, and I'd say it's a banger if it wasn't capable of driving you to tears. Next is Pokemon theme solo piano, which is just a sad version of the Pokemon theme played on a piano that was made for Movie 20. There's not much else to say about it, but I genuinely like how there's a more somber version of the Pokemon theme out there. Granted, this one doesn't have lyrics or anything, but 
you know, we all know the we all know the Pokemon theme, so that doesn't really matter. It's pretty good, and there's really nothing else like it, so I, it's not really that important. I, I figured I'd mention it because it's in the track list. Next up is Stand Tall, the English opening for X, Y, and Z. A lot of people seem to not like this one, but I actually do kind of like it. It gives to me those similar braggadocious never give up vibes from the likes of like Unbeatable. The tempo, the bass line, and the percussion combine to make it feel like this March to War type song. Like, you know, you're getting ready for the biggest Pokemon battle of your life. There's also a line near the end that I thought was pretty funny, which is, with the wisdom of years to guide me, which is pretty ironic considering Ash doesn't age. I think that they definitely could have done more with this song because even the full version just adds like one or two lines. But other than that, this is an opening that I think gets a little bit too much flack. Next is Soul Heart, the ending song from the Volcanion movie. This one's another tearjerker with a very somber tone. It's from the perspective of Magirna, who in the movie lives in a valley area and takes care of a bunch of abandoned Pokemon with Volcanion. The Soul Heart is what gives Magirna life and she repays that debt by helping these lost souls in their time of need. Super wholesome stuff. It's this slow song with this message that no matter how bad things get for you, someone will always be there for you. The singing is great and heartfelt and the instrumental has this really catchy melody. The only thing I don't like about it is everything that comes after the vocals stop. The last three minutes of this song consist of, you know, a guitar solo that doesn't really fit and an admittedly nice piano section, but then a bunch of like ambient unrelated music for the last minute or so. Other than that, it's a very genuine song, but I feel it goes unrecognized. Next is Be A Hero, the second X and Y opening theme, and it's okay. It's about as typical of a Pokemon opening as you could get with messages of friendship and all that. However, this song falls into a similar trap as I Want to Be a Hero from Advanced Generation, where it's about heroism, even though that's not really a thing for Ash. Ash's goal isn't to be a hero, it's to be a Pokemon master, and I'm not sure how those two things equate. The song is fine, the message just doesn't line up. Next is Every Side of Me, the ending song to the worst Pokemon movie, Hoopa and the Clash of Ages. It's a song about those kinds of friendships where you know each other better than you know yourselves, and that's pretty cute if you ask me. This feels like an early 2000s type song, you know, like this could belong in the movie 2000s soundtrack or like totally Pokemon or something. It just has that kind of vibe with the with the singing and the beat. The album version adds in this random interlude with this like Egyptian sounding music for like 30 seconds in the middle of the song for really no reason. And it's not there in the movie version. The movie version just kind of flows together. Much like the other ending songs, it's a very heartfelt and I like it. Next up is Join the Band from the Pikachu short Pikachu and the Pokemon Music Squad. I'm not a fan of this one at all. It's clearly made for children and it's not even like a guilty pleasure kind of song like that. As an adult, I find it a little bit annoying, but I'm, I'm sure kids love it. However, there are a few things that I find interesting about this one. Firstly, I like this one line in the song that goes, music is the only language that everybody understands, which is very true and I think it ties into the second thing. This song is actually an English version in a way of one of X and Y's Japanese ending songs, Roaring All Stars. It uses the same melody, which we don't all Always see, since the dub tends to block out anything relating to the Japanese music. They were kind of forced to do this because the Pokemon in the short actually sing the melody of the Japanese song, so they had to make an English song that sounds similar, which is kind of cool to me. It almost makes me wish that they would just make English versions of the Japanese openings, like what Dragon Ball does, but oh well, I guess. Anyways, this song is interesting to me as somebody who watches both dub and sub, but the song itself just kind of really isn't for me. Next we have Pokemon theme X and Y, the first opening for the X and Y series. Unlike the I Choose You version from earlier, this version is very different from the original, and I'll give it props for that. If you're gonna do a cover of an old song to bring it to a new audience, you gotta do something different with it, and I like what they did with this one. It's the Pokemon theme with a much faster, almost grungy feel to it, though that's probably a bad way to explain it. It's a lot less hardcore than the original, you know, it's a lot lighter in tone, and I think it works in this instance. Lyrically, it's the exact same, but production-wise, it's just a more light-hearted take on the Pokemon theme. It's I. The penultimate song here is Open My Eyes, the ending song from the Diancy movie, and I quite like it. It's from the perspective of Diancy, who started off in the movie as a very sheltered princess, but gained a new perspective on life throughout the, the movie. It's not the best arc in any Pokemon movie, but uh, the song does a good job at explaining it. The instrumental in the beginning is very vibey, the, like the kind of song you would listen to like out in nature or something like that. Once the guitars kick in, we get a pretty good solo, even though it's like three notes, but it's very, it's very intoxicating in a weird way. The song does feel a little bit overproduced in some instances with these excessive like butter fly noises. I'm not sure what they're actually called, but you, you know what I mean. They, they can get a little bit annoying. The second half of the song is a bunch of ambient piano music, but I actually like it in this instance and because I, I feel as though it adds to the emotion of the song. It's very reflective, I suppose. The singing is great with a lot of emotion behind it, and, and it's a song that I find myself really enjoying. And lastly, we have the key to me from the Pikachu short, Pikachu, what's this key? And much like the other song from the other Pikachu short, I'm just not feeling this one. The beat is actually pretty good. I like the start of it where it's just like the drum beat and the acoustic guitars kick in. I'm just not a fan of the lyrics at all. Again, it's clearly a kid's song, so I just don't jive with it as an adult. I'm sure kids love it, but it's not for me. It's catchy, but in a really annoying way. So that was the Pokemon Movie Music Collection, featuring music 
from movies 17 through 20. On their own, a lot of these songs work really well, some work even better in context, but they really don't have any reason being together on an album. The track order also bothered me to no end, because for whatever reason, it's in reverse chronological order. So I think this album would flow a lot better as an album if you played it in the reverse track order. I feel like the opening themes are very underrated here, and I think the ending themes are all very heartfelt and genuine. I was not a fan of the songs from the Pikachu shorts, but obviously they're not made for adults like me. Overall, this era of the anime had some great music that definitely goes overlooked because there's other Pokemon music out there from the other movies that is more fondly remembered by fans. Now let's move on to all the English opening songs that I didn't already talk about. Opening 10 is Diamond and Pearl's first opening song, simply titled Diamond and Pearl, as far as I'm aware. Some also call it the Sinnoh rap. Maybe it's just nostalgia talking since Diamond and Pearl was my first series, but I really don't get all the hate for this song. Sure, some of the lyrics make absolutely no sense, but you can't tell me that they did not go pretty damn hard here. It's, it's not exactly hip hop or, or rock rap or anything like that, or any genre really but it's just super catchy to me. Next is We Will Be Heroes, the 11th opening, though a different version of it was also used for movie 10, so I'll be including both of them here. One thing that both versions share is the chorus, and much like some of the openings we already discussed, I don't think that songs about being a hero really fit in with Pokemon, because heroism isn't what it's about. The verses are all quite good, though. The series version is short and sweet, as it's all about braving the proverbial storm with your friends by your side, you know, pretty typical stuff, while the movie version has similar themes in its verses. The series version is more upbeat, while the movie version is a little bit slower. They're both great songs, though I wish they both had longer versions, specifically the series version, as that definitely could have used a full version. Next is opening 12 titled Battle Cry or Stand Up. It's yet another friendship song, which is much more fitting than the previous two openings. The vocalist is great. The instruments and the lyrics give it this very inspirational vibe. It's, it's just a fantastic opening. It's a banger. And last for the Diamond and Pearl openings, we have opening 13, We Will Carry On. And it's probably my favorite Sinnoh opening. It starts off with this triumphant drum sound, like a, like a march to battle. Then it gets into this lighter tone with the vocals and lyrics about you know, typical Pokemon friendship stuff. And in the full version, there's this inspirational ass guitar solo before repeating the hook for a final time. This is a godly opening. It's the kind of song that makes you want to strive for greatness. It's, it's insane. It's a certified banger. Moving on to our black and white openings, first is the 14th opening, appropriately titled Black and White. One thing I like about this song, and the other black and white openings for that matter, is that they are all duets, and I don't think we've had Pokemon openings like this before or since then. There's a male singer and a female singer, and their voices really complement each other, you know, they, they got good chemistry. These two sing all of the black and white openings as far as I'm aware, so I won't mention them again for the sake of brevity. I genuinely wonder if they chose to make this opening a duet specifically to showcase the duality aspect of Gen 5, but maybe I'm just looking too far into it. Unlike previous Pokemon openings, this one is all about choices and the doubt we all feel when making them. You know that feeling of, oh, you know, <clears throat> oh, did I make the right choice? This song is about that, but it gives you a more hopeful yet cliche message of following your heart and that not everything in life is black or white, which I could totally get behind. The instrumental is nice, it's not too in your face or overproduced, it fits really well with the message of the song. Black and White may not be the best series, but its openings are all really good. This one is a banger. Next we have opening 15, Rival Destinies. This one takes a step back in terms of lyrical content in the sense that it's more generic friendship stuff that we get from the other openings, but they put a unique enough spin on it that I can totally forgive, and there are some really wholesome lines in there. I really like the melody, and the guitars in the background are really appealing. It's a great opening, and it slaps, but it's not the best. And last for the Black and White openings, we have It's Always You and Me, the 16th English opening. Lyrically, this one is almost the exact same as the last one, but the instrumentation is different enough, and they do a lot of different things vocally, which I could totally appreciate. It slaps, but I think I prefer it over the previous opening. Moving on, we have the Sun and Moon opening, starting with opening 20, Under the Alolan Sun. I'm not a fan of this one at all. It, feel, it, it feels too kiddy. It's very lyrically generic. It doesn't feel like there's any heart in it. I think it does a good job at giving off that tropical vacation vibe that you'd expect in a region like Alola, but that's kind of all it has going for it. I'm sure if there were a full version, it'd be a lot better, but all we have is 30 seconds, and I, I don't like those 30 seconds. Opening 21 is titled Under the Alolan Moon, and it has so much potential to be great. The beat is fantastic, in my opinion, but it's severely lacking in the lyrical department. The first half of this song is literally like 12 words, and they're all kind of lame and have no real meaning behind them. The song gets really good in the second half, like the last 15 seconds, which is why I say it has potential, but we never get to see that potential shine because it's so short. This opening deserves a full version because it's such a unique opening that is wasted on a 30 second 
second little tune. Next is opening 22, The Challenge of Life, which again has a lot of potential that they couldn't use because of the 30 second time frame. Whenever I hear it, I'm never feeling it at first, but around halfway through, I start really getting into it. I'm like, oh yeah, this is actually pretty good. But by the time I'm invested in the song, it, it ends. Much like Under the Alolan Sun, this opening is a great job at, the, at, the, at that tropical vibe. You know, it sounds like a Hawaiian fire twirler performance or some shit. And there's a bit of depth in the lyrics, so I could definitely appreciate that. Again, the problem with all of the Sun and Moon openings to me is that they're too short. They all end before you can really get into them. And if they had full versions, I probably wouldn't feel this way. They're decent, they're just all bogged down by the very short runtime. Fuck you, United States Broadcast Standards, you stupid bitch. And lastly, we have the current opening for the dub of Pokemon Journeys, titled The Journey Starts Today. As of the time I'm recording this, the full version is not out yet, so I'll base this review off of the 30 seconds that we have so far. The first 10 seconds or so feels kind of bland to me, but around halfway in, it gets quiet and, and we're already on our way. Then it kicks into overdrive with the chorus. The end of this opening feels very triumphant and adventurous, and I think the background vocals help give off that kind of vibe. The TV size version is okay, but I think I'll wait for the full version to make a final verdict on this one. Now let's get into the end credit song for the Pokemon movies. Not a lot of people online seem to talk about these, and that seems to be a bit of an untapped market, so... Let's talk about them. We've already reviewed the ending themes for movies one and two, so let's skip to movie three's ending theme to know the unknown. This one is an absolute banger. The acoustic guitar instrumental is soothing as all hell, the singing is insanely great, and the lyrics are wholesome as fuck. You know that, you know that one line from Forrest Gump where he's like, I am not a smart man, but I know what love is. I, I, I fucking hate that movie. I fucking hate Forrest Gump. The song is basically that. It's, it's, it's about how you don't need the answers to life's biggest questions. You just need the people you love, and that's pretty fucking wholesome. It's an absolute banger. I recommend that you go listen to it. Next is the ending song to Pokemon Forever titled Celebrate. When I first listened to this song, I thought it was just some dumb feel-good song about literal time travel. But then I read the lyrics and I found that this song has a little bit more meaning to it than I initially thought. It uses time travel to make a point about living every day to the fullest because you can't get your lost time back. You can't go back in time. The name and hook of the song is also pretty clever. It says Celebi, as in Celebi from the movie, and then R-A-T-E. So it spells celebrate with a little time travel Pokemon pun in there. In terms of production, the song was made by the same guy who made the To Be A Master song. So if you liked that, then you'll probably like this one. This song is certainly an outlier when compared to the other movie endings, but it slaps pretty hard. I'm going to skip Pokemon Heroes because its ending songs are all ones that we've already discussed in this video, but I will say that their version of You and Me and Pokemon is a great ballad version of the original. That's really all I have to say about it. Next is Make a Wish from Movie 6, Jirashi Wishmaker. One thing that immediately stands out to me about this song is that it's one of the very rare times where the English dub keeps the Japanese music. The version of the song used in the dub combines English with Japanese, with the first verse and the first chorus being in English and the second verse and chorus in Japanese. The melody of this song is also heavily used in the movie itself, so I assume that's why they decided to do this. Anyways, this is a fantastic song. It's that typical Pokemon message of striving to make your dreams come true, but it's particularly relevant here because the movie is about making wishes. It also has nostalgic elements to it with the Japanese sections being more about going back to a better, more peaceful time than it is about wishing. The singing is great from both parties and the instrumental is like something straight out of a Disney movie and like, you know, in like a good way. The song has a very magical feel to it and I assume that it's by design. This song is definitely a banger for sure. Next song is from movie seven, Destiny Deoxys and is titled This Side of Paradise. This song is used throughout the movie with an insert song during a certain scene as well as orchestral versions as background music. I, I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan of this song, specifically because I just find it very annoying. It's a very upbeat and chipper feel-good song all about forgetting your worries and having a good time, which is totally fine, but it, it gets on my nerves and I really don't know why. Maybe it's just the constant, you know, la 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 just through the entire song that just kind of drives me insane. It's an okay song, it's, 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 I'm just not into it. Next we have We Will Meet Again from Movie 8, aka the Lucario movie. This one is yet another banger and I will explain why, obviously. Why would I not explain why? You fucking, you fucking invalid. Aside from the very hopeful and positive instrumental, this song also relates heavily to the movie that it's in, and in multiple ways. It can be interpreted as Ash's quest to save Pikachu that we see in the movie, since they're best friends and will obviously do anything for each other. However, it can also be interpreted by some of the more chivalrous lyrics that is about Lucario and Sir Eric. There are lyrics about sacrifice, which Lucario obviously does at the end of the movie. Spoilers, by the way. The line in the title, We Will Meet Again, seems kind of grim when you look at it as Lucario seeing Sir Aaron again in the afterlife. And they even use the word steadfast in the first verse, and steadfast is one of Lucario's abilities. Not sure if that last one was planned, but... It's cool nonetheless. The lyrics are also vague enough to where anyone can apply it to themselves, and I'm a sucker for any song about meeting old friends again. The song is a banger, and it's definitely a favorite of mine. Next we have Movie 9, Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea, and its ending song, Together We'll Make a Promise. This song deals with very similar subject matter as the previous one, 
and I think it's equally as good. It's a goodbye song, but it's very sweet in the way that it handles goodbyes. It's about how even though you have to say goodbye to your friend or whoever, that you'll always be in each other's memories. One line in particular that I really liked in regards to this was, and if you hear me in a raindrop, I'm not that far away, you can see in your reflection another side of me. Which implies that your relationships, past and present, will always be a part of you. The song is super adorable in this regard. The vocals are also really impressive and the instrumental is this very smooth, kind of mysterious vibe, which to me reminds me of the mysterious nature of the ocean, which happens to be heavily featured in this movie, but again, maybe I'm just looking too far into it. This song is a banger that I feel goes unnoticed because the movie it's from wasn't all that good. <laughs> Moving on to movie 10, we actually have two songs here, and of course I'll talk about both of them, why wouldn't I? Why would I not? First is titled I'll Always Remember You, and I might be a little nostalgic bias here since the Dark Rye movie was my first movie, but this song is actually quite good. You've got a sad yet hopeful vibe going on with this one with the vocals and instrumental, but I think this song is best when you look at it lyrically. This is most definitely a song about loss, with lines about sacrifice and remembrance, which wouldn't make sense if the song wasn't about death. It's about the it's, it's about honoring the fallen by carrying them with you every day, which I'm sure plenty of people can certainly relate to. This relates to the movie in multiple ways as well, where Darkrai sacrifices himself near the end of the movie, and everybody mourns him despite not knowing that he's actually still alive, but it can also apply to Alice, who comes up with the idea to use Oracion, a song taught to her by her now deceased grandmother Alicia, to quell the fighting of the legendary Pope. Pokemon. You know, Alice keeps her grandmother's memory alive through Oracion, and I think that it could definitely apply to this ending song. If it weren't such a sad song, I'd say that it slaps. The other ending song from movie 10 is titled Living in the Shadows, and it's a complete departure from the previous song. I don't know what kind of, I don't know what genre this really falls into, but at least to me it gives me like new metal vibes, but I guess it technically qualifies as just plain rock, but either way, it's an absolute banger. It's got this mysterious vibe to it where it makes you want to uncover some like hidden conspiracy, and, and the vocals definitely add to that. The song is more or less about Dark Rye, literally, where it's, he's literally living in the shadows as the title suggests, and the first line of the song goes as follows. Sometimes it's hard to know whether someone you meet is friend or foe, which applies to Darkrai's anti-hero nature in the movie. To some, he's a friend, to others, he's an enemy, and this song does a pretty good job at encapsulating that. This is definitely one of the more slept-on Pokemon songs out there, but it's a banger and definitely deserves way more recognition. Next, we have movie 11's ending theme, This is a Beautiful World. Considering one of the major themes of the Giratina movie was the relationship between people and nature, it's quite fitting that the ending song is all about respecting nature and acknowledging that beauty exists in the natural world. It's on some hippie shit, and that's supported by the very chipper instrumental. It's the kind of song where if you listen to it and then go outside on like a nice day afterwards, you start to see the world a little bit differently. And that's certainly a testament to the power of music in general, but that this song was definitely effective in its message. I wouldn't say it's a favorite of mine, but I think it certainly slapped. It's definitely a very good song. Next we have If We Only Learn from Movie 12, Arceus and the Jewel of Life. This song has a message similar to that of the previous song, but to me it felt a little bit more preachy. For instance, this line made me cringe a little bit. This song's for all the children looking for a better way. Oh, it's, oh, it's for the children. Oh, Brian, Brian, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for the children, Brian. Why did I turn into Stewie? I don't fucking know. The message isn't a bad one, though. It's, it's about how we as humans need to work together to improve the world, and that in order to do that, we need mutual trust in each other, which is reflected in the movie with how Arceus trusted Damon with the Jewel of Life in order to help his people, and later in the movie where Ash and his friends help regain that trust with Arceus. The instrumental mostly consists of acoustic guitar and some backing drums, and it sounds pretty good and gives off that lighthearted vibe that it was going for, and the vocals helped with this by making it sound very heartfelt and genuine. Since the Arceus movie was the last in a trilogy, the movie also uses the other, the previous two ending songs in the credits, which kind of ties the whole trilogy together, and I think that the song works better without them. This one definitely slaps. Next is Movie 13's ending song titled I Believe In You. In case you guys haven't noticed by now, for whatever reason, whenever I hear acoustic guitars as the main instrument in a song, it makes the song feel a lot more genuine and personal to the person performing it, and this song is definitely that. Of course, the electric guitars and drums kick in later in the song, but they don't really ruin it by any means since the vocals are just as genuine. This song seems to be about a parental bond, with lyrics about unconditional acceptance and guidance, and I can see how this connects to Zorua and Zoroark in the movie, where Zorua is trying to find his mother throughout the film, and Zoroark protects her child near the end of the movie. It's vague enough to where it could apply to just a friend, but it works better, I think, as a parental thing. This one is definitely a slapper for me, but it's quite good with a very nice, wholesome message. Next up, we have two versions of the same song for two versions of movie 14. The song is called Follow Your Star, and there's the ideals mix for the white version of the movie and the truth mix for the black version of the movie. These two mixes are completely different in terms of production, but are the exact same lyrically. The ideals mix uses more acoustic instruments like guitars and... I wrote crumbs, but I, 
I wrote crumbs in my script, but I think I meant drums. But it uses guitars and drums. Well, the truth mix is a lot more produced, featuring a lot of synths and electric guitars, but both feature elements of the other in terms of instrumental. I assume that this was done on purpose to showcase the duality of truth and ideals that Gen 5 was all about, but the movie specifically had themes of tradition versus modernity, and these songs definitely reflect that in their instrumentation. Oh, and did I mention that these songs are performed by the same duo who sang the last two openings for Black and White, with Alex Knackman on the Ideal Mix and Catherine Rao on the Truth Mix? Yeah, man. Gen 5 music stays winning. That's all I'm saying. But like I said, these songs differ in these regards, but they are the exact same lyrically. The lyrics are that typical Pokemon stuff about following your dreams, and they take after the first black and white intro in regards to decisions and not doubting yourself. What I find most interesting about this song is that it's called Follow Your Star, and Victini, one of the main legendaries in the movie, has the ability Victory Star. You know, you follow your star to victory. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just looking too deep into this stuff. Either way, both versions of the song are absolute bangers, though if I had to pick a favorite, I'd say probably the Ideals mix. Next we have It's All Inside of You from Movie 15, and I'm I'm not really a fan. It's not that the song is particularly bad, in fact the production is pretty good and the lyrics are very inspirational and wholesome. I just find the song to be boring. The first 10 or 20 seconds of the song just turn me off from it, and it, it's too slow and too preachy for my liking. It's not bad, it's just not for me. And the last of the black and white movie endings is We're Coming Home from Movie 16. This isn't my favorite end of the ending songs, but I admire how wholesome it is. It's about having fun and going on adventures, but at the end of the day, you always return home to get ready for the next adventure. It's a cute song and it feels very genuine, but it's just not for me. We already did the X and Y movies and Movie 20 earlier in the video, but as it turns out, there's actually another English ending song for the I Choose You movie that I actually didn't know about. Well, the US and other countries other than Japan got I Choose You as the ending song, Singapore actually got a completely different song called Future. It's in English and was made for the English dub in Singapore, which is why I'm counting it. Surprisingly to me, this song is pretty fantastic. It reminds me of The Power of One from Movie 2 and its structure and the performances, with both having a similar theme about making a better future, but Future has another theme. Alongside Making a Better Future, this song is more or less about Ash and Pikachu's friendship and the adventures that they have and will continue to have, and the idea that they are inseparable as best friends. It's a delightful song, and I wish more countries got to hear it. It's slaps. Next we have Movie 21's ending song that shares its name with the movie's title, The Power of Us. The song is subtle, if that makes sense. It doesn't try to be anything extra extravagant. It's a sweet little song about working together and believing in the collective power that we have as people. It's interesting to point out that it has the same message as The Power of One, and both songs were featured in the movies that had Lugia as the main selling point, and where Ash had to work together with his friends to save the day. Interesting parallels there, I wonder if it was intentional. There's also a line that relates to the movie that goes, I'm ready to run again, which is a reference to the character Risa, who runs track and has confidence issues that she overcomes in the film. Like I said, this song is subtle, and I think it works because of that. I wouldn't say it's the best ending song out there, but it's, it's definitely one of the more underappreciated. And lastly, for the English movie ending themes, we have Keep Evolving from Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution, the CG remake of the first movie. Of course, they obviously couldn't keep the songs that they used in the first dub due to licensing issues, so they pr they made their own. And all honestly, this is probably the most unique dub song that I've heard since TPC I took over the dub. It's never overly positive, they don't ruin it with these overproduced fluttery sound effects, it's just guitars, trumpets, and some synths here and there, and the vocals carry the song, and I think the best performances from the TPC I dub singers. The first minute and a half is genuinely kind of dark, it gives you this hopeless feeling, and those first two verses are more or less the story of Mewtwo. The chorus is a little more hopeful with the message that in order to make it in this world, we need to keep changing or evolving as people. There were several points in this song where I thought they were going to do the generic TPCI thing and make it some happy song in the second half, but no, they actually do keep it relatively dark. They keep it relatively contained. I was genuinely surprised by how good this song was, and if Ed Goldfarb and the rest of the crew with TPCI keep this up, uh, then we'll have some definitely some great tunes on our hands in the future. So those were all the English movie ending themes that we didn't already discuss as of 2020, and honestly, they're all very great, underrated gems of songs. There are a few stinkers, but even the bad ones aren't even really that bad. I just, it was just that I personally didn't like them. My personal favorites are definitely We Will Meet Again, Follow Your Star, Living in the Shadow, To Know the Unknown, Make a Wish, and Future, with everything else being pretty solid as well. The way almost all of these tracks relate to the movies they're in is fantastic, and they all work to further the themes of their respective films. We'll give some of these a listen, because there are definitely some good ones in there. Oh, hey, does this crack I have different clothes now? What's the deal with that? Shut up, you didn't see anything. This isn't real. Not a continuity error, I swear. So now we're in the final stretch of the video, the miscellaneous section where we'll be discussing 
all the stuff that isn't part of any album or that's not an opening theme or anything like that, just all the odds and ends that are kind of random in there. Most of these are insert songs, but there are some other obscure ones that I'm sure you probably won't see coming. Going in chronological order, let's take a look at the end of original series where Ash, Brock, and Misty part ways before Ash heads to Hoenn. In episode 273 of the original series titled Gotta Catch You Later, there's a flashback montage of Misty's best moments as a trainer and with her friends, and during the montage in the dub, there's a song sung by Rachel Lillis, Misty's original voice actress, called Goodbye or Misty Most of All. The, pen, the, the title is not actually said in stone. It's a short song about how Misty is going to miss Ash when they part ways. Uh, the dub, I, I obviously loved its poker shipping. We've discussed that as ad nauseum in this video. So they obviously changed the montage a little bit to fit more in line with that, but it really doesn't change the song itself all that much. The song isn't even very romantic in nature, and it's more of a friendship song where Misty's just saying goodbye to a good friend. I think, you know, I think it's a cute song. Rachel Lillis has a great singing voice, and the lyrics are simple in the most adorable way possible. It's a tear trigger if you're in the right mood for it, and I think a full version of it would have been great, but unfortunately it's just restricted to an insert song in the episode. Next up we have Type Wild, which is actually the fifth Japanese ending song, but for whatever reason an English version was made specifically for a Japanese segment called Pokemon Day English, which is a segment that aired during rebroadcasts of the anime called Pokemon Encore in Japan, made to teach young kids English through Pokemon episodes. In other words, they used the English dub of Pokemon to teach Japanese kids simple English, alongside some songs from To Be A Master and Totally Pokemon, and some English versions of some Japanese songs. For this reason, an English version of Type Wild was made for Japanese audiences. Personally, I think the English version is great. It's a very accurate translation, the singer matches Rika Matsumoto's original pretty well, and it captures the energy of the original perfectly. I really wish that they would have used the English version in the series itself, you know, in the actual dub, because it would have made scenes like Ash vs. Paul or Ash vs. Kukui way cooler alongside matching the Japanese versions where the song was used in those instances. I genuinely think that Type Wild is one of the best Pokemon songs, just period. Like, like it's up there with the Pokemon theme and you and me and Pokemon, you know, it's, it's that good. It's an absolute banger. Next we have a bit of an obscure one that some of my UK viewers might remember, and it's Gotta Catch Em All by 50 Grind. Or is it 0.5 Grind? I don't know how you say it. Uh, this was released on a promotional CD in the UK in 2001, and it featured a music video for this song, specifically. The song itself is kind of new metal, think like Limp Bizkit or like early Linkin Park, which I'm I'm a sucker for, that kind of stuff. It's this braggadocious track about being the best, and as the title suggests, catching them all, with samples from the anime sprinkled throughout. It's quite catchy, and it's a neat little footnote in Pokemon history, for those that probably don't know about it. Next we have an insert song from Movie 5, Pokemon Heroes. The song is titled Secret Garden, and is used in the scene where Ash and Pikachu play with Latios and Latias in the Secret Garden. This is one of those rare instances where the Japanese music is kept in the dub, however, this one kind of works since it was already in, sung in English anyways. The song seems to be from the perspective of Latios and or Latias about the beauty of the town of Altomar and the secret garden that the two live in, but they can't be free because they need to be kept a secret or else people are going to try to capture them like we see in the movie. It's about how these two escape their loneliness by playing together in the Secret Garden, which is super fucking wholesome. It's a great song with a lot of emotion behind it, I'd say that it slaps. Moving on to Advanced Generation, we have a song from the episode A Scared to Remember titled You Can't Remember. In the episode, Pikachu loses his memory and temporarily joins Team Rocket and Ash tries to get him back and try to jog tries to jog his memory. It seems like this song was never meant to get an official release since it definitely could have been included on Pokemon X or Pokemon 10, the anniversary album, but I guess all they had was the minute long section from the episode, so I doubt that a full version of it actually exists. The song itself is actually quite good, but a little on the nose in its messaging, directly referencing the episode. It's a nice little, little guitar song with not a whole lot of uh, deep meaning behind it. Next we have another insert song for the Advanced Generation dub titled The Real Me, which plays in the episode Do I Hear a Ralts, in the scene where Max takes a Ralts to the Pokemon Center. They somehow took a scene that wouldn't have been sad at all and somehow made it a fucking tearjerker. The song has literally no reason to go as hard as it does, but it goes pretty fucking hard. It's this super emotional ballad about revealing one's true colors, and I really wish that there were a full version. I assume that the reason there isn't one is because of the fact that it was made under four kids and they stopped handling the dub after Advanced Generation, and the episode released way too close to the release of Pokemon X to where they probably couldn't fit it in there. It's a shame that there aren't any clean rips of it anywhere without the episode dialogue or a version officially released anywhere at all, because I would love to hear a long longer version of this because it's just an absolute banger. Our next song comes from a strange place, it actually comes from a commercial advertising the release of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Double Battles were the new big feature of Gen 3, so to advertise that feature, they got Veronica Taylor and Rachel Lillis, the dub voices for Ash and Misty, to record a Pokemon 
Pokemon cover of It Takes Two by Marvin Gaye and Kim Weston. So if you're into that kind of music, then you'll probably like, get a kick out of this one too. Instead of them singing about love and all that, they sing about how two Pokemon are better than one, you know, double battles and all that. The chorus, however, is completely unchanged, and it has Ash and Misty calling each other baby, making this a Pokeshipper's wet dream. I can't find the actual commercial on YouTube, which leads me to believe it might be Lost Media, but I'm guessing I might not, I just might not be looking hard enough, I don't know. But the full song exists completely in its entirety on YouTube. It's another piece of Pokemon history that many fans will likely go their entire lives without knowing about. Let's move on to the dub of Diamond and Pearl, where we have an insert song that has no clean rip online and no official release. The song is titled This Is The Moment or The Ultimate Challenge and was used in place of some Japanese songs in the dub. Specifically in battles such as Dawn vs. Zoe in the Grand Festival and Ash vs. Conway and Ash vs. Paul in the Sinnoh League. They use this song in the background a lot, but because of that there's no clean rip of the song without dialogue or sound effects over it. From what you can hear of it though, it sounds like it totally could have been opening theme material. It's got those themes of striving towards your goals and all that kind of stuff, but it works just as well as an insert song. I wish the dub would have used more inserts since I think part of what makes the sub so good is that they use inserts all the time and it typically enhances those scenes. This is one of the few times that the dub has actually done this and I wish they would do it more, especially if they have good songs of this caliber. It's pretty good from what you can actually hear from it and it would probably be way better if you didn't hear Piplup screaming in your ear the entire time. Next we have the Unova Poker app titled Can't Stop Catching Them All performed by the Presidents of the United States of America. Why would you name your band this? That's kind of stupid. It's not really a rap per se, but it serves the same purpose of just naming off Pokemon and much like the Hoenn Poker app, they add in extra lyrics and descriptions to make it more than just a list of Pokemon. They only go over 50 or so of Gen 5's 156 Pokemon, and a lot of that runtime goes towards the descriptions, and those descriptions kind of suck. For example, there's one line in the song that goes, Lillipup is little and brown. Like, like yeah, buddy, cool, I didn't fucking realize that. Nice, nice, nice observation, dickhead. The music video is also kind of unintentionally hilarious, with a bunch of old dudes dancing around singing about imaginary monsters. It's a fucking riot. I would say that it's the weakest of the poker apps, if you could even call it that, but it's quite catchy, so I will definitely give it props where that's due. Next we have a strange, strange song Catchatronic released to coincide with an X and Y promotional internet scavenger hunt. Fun fact, I actually remember the scavenger hunt uh, from back in the day, and the prizes were all just like Pokemon ringtones. In fact, the Wobbuffet one is still my text tone to this day. But anyways, uh, this song is fucking weird. It's it's bizarre. Like, I, I can't even really describe this to you because it's so weird. The, the main melody is kind of catchy, I guess. I, I, I don't really know what to tell you here. It's whack, but I recommend that you li listen to it for yourself, you just, to, just to hear how fucking whack this song is. Next we have the Magikarp song, a song all about how useless Magikarp is, but we still love him. We still love him anyway. We still love that little bundle of fucking useless. I, I I don't I don't like this song like at all. It's got this Spanish guitar thing going on, but then it turns into like a like a polka song partway through. I can't tell what genre this is really supposed to be. Obviously the song is made for like small children, so it's not going to appeal to me. But it's just it's just annoying to me. It's wholesome and it's got heart, but it, it just ain't for me. It's, it's not for me, Doug. Next we've got a weird one titled Staddle Up Trainers from the 2018 Pokemon World Championships. That year's competition was held in Nashville, Tennessee. You know, Music City, as it were, the home of the Country Music Hall of Fame. So obviously, we got us a Pokemon country song, boys. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Boy, I tell you what, no, I gotta, I gotta play them Pokemons! I gotta play them Pokemons! It's got that classic uh, country song sound and rhythm to it with those typical Pokemon lyrics about making friends through friendly competition and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't really like country music at at all, so this song doesn't really appeal to me. But if you like Pokemon and modern country music, then this might be the song for you. And the last song that we'll be talking about today is the ending theme from Detective Pikachu, Carry On by Kaigo and Rita Ora. The reason I didn't talk about the Detective Pikachu soundtrack earlier in this video is because this was the only song made specifically for it that wasn't part of the actual score, and the official soundtrack for the movie doesn't actually include any of the licensed tracks. But anyways, Carry On is a decent song, albeit a product of its time. It's very overproduced and it falls in line with other pop songs of the late 20s. Lyrically though, the song describes the movie perfectly. The verses kind of explore Tim's loneliness without his dad and his melancholic life before the film, with the pre-chorus being about how Tim found a friend in Pikachu and was able to reconnect with his father. It's actually a really heartfelt song despite its generic pop sound. I'm not too crazy about the hook as it's just a bunch of like remixed vocals over the beat, but it doesn't really ruin the song or anything like that. It's a decent song that I think definitely has earned its place in Pokemon history. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is almost every single Pokemon song reviewed. I was originally going to go through all the Japanese OPs and review those as well, but that made this video way longer than it already is, so I will, I will be doing a part two to this video eventually, specifically covering the Japanese songs. And again, you can find most of these songs in one playlist, my Pokemon Anime Music Mix playlist, link in the description, 
go check it out. It, it's what it's your one-stop shop for all things Pokemon music, for all your Pokemon music needs. Leave a comment down below, let me know what your favorite Pokemon song is, and if you learned of any new Pokemon songs today, if you found something you liked. If you guys like the idea of me reviewing music from different properties, from different shows and that kind of stuff, then please consider subscribing because I do plan on doing similar videos for other franchises. And you know, you know, maybe we'll make a series out of this, probably without the Fantano parody, because at this point I'm just ripping him off. There's also a bitch and a half to set up. I fucking hate using the green screen. But that's all for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. I've been Matt CMG, and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.